Dr. Jane Lepchenko is here. We're very thrilled and honored to have her. She, as all of you know, is an Undersecretary of Commerce. She is a marine ecologist and very well known in the field. Um, we're thrilled to have her today and we're hosting her here at SOMAS, the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences here at Stony Brook University. We're an assembled group of New York Sea Grant staff as well as numerous uh, researchers and their students. We're going to allow her to be kind of a beautiful swimmer and circulate. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's great to be here. Uh, as all of you know, uh, NOAA's focus is on oceans and atmosphere and so that's actually a really nice fit for the areas of expertise that many of you bring. Um, our mission for uh, creating and using science to develop services uh, and to provide stewardship responsibility uh, makes it really important that we have good partners. Uh, sea Grant is clearly one of our very, very important partners, but other parts of the academic community are as well. And so uh, I welcome any opportunity to learn about the latest, coolest, uh, most intriguing or puzzling things that you all are working on. So I think we should get on with uh, some rolling and swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have Dr. Lubchenko and Bruce um, here on our, uh, as part of our 40th anniversary year. The people you see here are, in addition to our staff, are a lot of our, our PIs, both with uh, New York Sea Grant, also other NOAA PIs, also the Long Island Sound Study PIs. I want to introduce Sylvain de Guise, who's the Connecticut Sea Grant Director right there. Mark Tedesco is hiding over here. He's, uh, he's head of the uh, Long Island Sound Study, the EPA National Estuary Program. And um, Cornelius Schlink, our Assistant Director right there. This is a great outpost for NOAA. And Stony Brook is really a powerhouse for the um, marine and atmospheric sciences in New York. And uh, the expertise that they have here has been a great asset to New York Sea Grant and thus NOAA and the stakeholders of New York. It's really a broad range from uh, coastal processes, physical oceanography, fisheries, shellfish, toxicology, animal health, <laughs> pretty much you name it. They have some expertise here for it and Sea Grant's funded them to conduct research. <laughs> Dr. Gordon Taylor uses an award-winning poster by Sea Grant scholar Liz Souter to explain the problem of oxygen depletion, known as hypoxia, in Long Island Sound. He and Dr. Kamazima Louisa are looking at the biological and physical factors controlling hypoxia. Dr. Malcolm Bowman, part of the Stony Brook Storm Surge team, discusses his interview in the Wall Street Journal about the feasibility of using closable gates to protect New York City from damaging floods. Ms. Cornelia Schlenk discusses some of New York Sea Grant's past and current research and outreach projects that address important problems and opportunities related to coastal dependent businesses, fisheries, coastal hazards, water quality, and coastal habitats. Ms. Antoinette Clementson, New York Sea Grant's marine fisheries specialist, discusses the factors that led to the Long Island Sound lobster die-off in the late 1990s. She also sponsors life-saving safety at sea workshops for commercial fishermen on eastern Long Island. Mr. Ken Gall, New York Sea Grant seafood specialist, is a nationally recognized trainer who helps seafood businesses comply with federal safety regulations designed to keep seafood fresh. Dr. Bassam Alam directs Stony Brook's Marine Animal Disease Laboratory. His research team has conducted breakthrough research on a pathogen known as QPX, 
or quahog parasite unknown, a disease in one of New York's most important commercial shellfish species, the hard clam. Dr. Jackie Collier uses the FlowCam to demonstrate the presence of harmful algal blooms and other plankton in local waters. Dr. Christopher Gobler and Dr. Jackie Collier are plankton ecologists whose recent paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences revealed for the first time the details of the brown tide genome that give this harmful algal bloom the ability to outcompete other algae. Dr. Gobler explains the pattern of red tide outbreaks recently found in Long Island waters. Sea Grant scholar Sean Broughton explains how weather patterns in Long Island Sound can affect seasonal hypoxia. Mr. Mark Tedesco and Dr. Sylvain de Guise discuss NOAA partnerships arising from the Long Island Sound Cable Fund. Aquatic toxicologist Dr. Anne McElroy has studied estrogen mimics and the effect of pesticides on lobster mortality. Benthic ecologist Dr. Robert Serrato has specialized in shellfish and habitat mapping.